Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm ready to do <laughs> my first impression slash disassembly of the oh god MTNT Mach 1. I always want to call it the TMNT because of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this thing is awesome, guys. I originally bought this, well not this, I originally bought one from my buddy Justin on Instagram. I'll link... Uh, I'll try to link his uh, Instagram here in the description. His name's Justin. He goes by, oh, God, JB underscore Naf Show, K-N-A-F Show on Instagram. Just has cool knives. He trades and sells and, you know, has a lot of cool knives. And uh, we've kind of bonded over that and we've done a few deals. And uh, he's the guy I bought my Jaeger M off of, uh, which eventually... I, well, not eventually, right away, I sold to Jake uh, because it didn't really fit me and I thought it would fit Jake perfectly and he wanted one. Um, I'm now looking for one in a flipper variation. But anyway, this is the MTNT Mach 1. It has these G10, uh, what do they call it, like lava flow scales. It really does look kind of like carbon fiber and this is like the only G10 other than maybe the bombshell that doesn't bother me. Um, I really don't like G10 very much, so if I can avoid it, I will. Um, but on this one, it's fine. Also, guys, check out the mug. Got the, I'm trying not to spill here. Got the on the edge mug here. Uh, we got these made. They screwed up a little bit up here on the Malibu blade, so I don't know if that's just this one. Or if, um, you know, it's all of them. I'll have to talk to Kyle about that. But anyway, um, that's pretty cool. We are selling those. Um, I think we're going to sell them for like 20 or 25 bucks. It'll come with um, one of these cool on-the-edge pins. It'll come with, obviously, my stickers, Kyle stickers. It'll come with a on-the-edge uh, keychain, which is also pretty cool. Um, and that basically just helps us pay for that order and uh you know we each get a mug <laughs> you know we got like 12 of them and it was like 240 bucks or 300 bucks something like that um so if we sell them you know for 10 or or sorry for 20 or 25 bucks we'll get back what we paid for the mugs and each get one basically um and then obviously we have the pins and the keychains too just something cool to do for the show and anybody who actually cares. I don't know if anybody does. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed this knife. Um, it's probably one of the only front flipper type knives that I really have enjoyed. Um, you know, I, I've, ha I've done videos on how I hate front flippers. But like this one being a liner lock, Riot made. Um, the hole for deployment is absolute money. Um, and then the top flipper, awesome. You can do the reach around with the top flipper. Um, you can do a thumb flick, but it's really hard. It's not very intuitive. You have to really whip it out. Yeah, I can't even do it. Um, but I don't care because I don't want to use my thumb. Obviously, right-handed, all of that becomes easier because you have the clip. So that gets me into why this is not the original one. Um... I was filming one day and I guess I rushed. I had this in my back left pocket. That's where I carry a lot of right-handed knives, especially smaller ones. And I must have rushed and sat down in my computer chair and caught the clip. And usually when I do that, the clip will like bend or something. And then I just have to take the clip off, maybe bend it back or order a new clip or something. Uh, but in this case, the clip ended up over here. Like, bzzz. I posted it on Instagram if you're curious and the scale here was cracked from right here all the way down to about here just cracked in half um you know and then this pin was all crooked and whatever I took it apart and kind of like pieced it put it back together and I actually got it to like run and be fine centered and everything but obviously it had a crack down the center so I contacted uh, Wingman EDC, and I shipped it to them. So I paid to ship it to them. Uh, I guess I paid like eight bucks to do that. Um, 
they got it, determined that they would replace it for me, and I paid another 12 bucks to ship it back to me. I chose to have it ship FedEx a little faster, so you, I could have paid seven, I think, or no, it was 10 or 12, I paid 12. So basically, I paid like 20 bucks to have a brand new knife sent to me, um, and it was totally my fault. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it should crack in half being you know caught on something like that, most clips will just bend or whatever. But obviously this clip is held in from a screw on this side. And maybe that has something to do with why the torque on that clip kind of just cracked everything. I don't know. But they handled it extremely well. I'm very grateful to Wingman EDC for taking care of that for me. Because um, this really became, uh, quickly became one of my favorite little knives to carry around. Um, especially a back pocket knife and it's just so much fun to fidget with um, I had put skiff bearings in it and everything and um, yeah I was just excited about it and then I you know messed it up and so that's why you guys haven't seen any more videos on this um, so I am gonna go ahead and disassemble this put skiffs back in it and uh, we can talk a little more about the knife if you want Obviously, it's more about if I want because I'm the one here. Um, let's see. T8. I don't know if they loctited it. It is a spinning pivot, of course. That's basically my one negative with um, Riot is that they do spinning pivots. Um, other than that, I almost always love anything that Riot does unless it's just something that's not my jam you know and that happens it happens to everybody right um uh, you can't can't fall in love with everything guys even though i wish i could so i don't know why i'm doing it. i'm just gonna go right to this i always do that and i regret it this little guy is so much more handy for a spinning pivot because i to be safe I can hold the knife in my hand with the driver. I can't do that with any of my other drivers. And then I can just use this one to rotate out, which worked perfectly. Boom. See that? So then I'll put that down. I might need it again later. Take, I think, yeah, I have to take the clip off because it runs through. That holds everything together. I've taken this apart. I've took the other one apart a few times. And I did have to Loctite that one. Um, so we'll see if this one requires that or not. Um, so you see that screw holds this clip in. And it is in a little slot. So again, it surprised me that it popped off like that. And it just cracked everything down the center. But I don't know. Interesting, right? So I think that's it. Let's see if we can wiggle her apart. Maybe I have to take this out somehow. Or just loosen it somehow. There we go. Just be careful. Here's your uh, steel washer that basically Riot does on every knife now. And the bearings run on that. Then you have your blade and you have your standard. Uh, basically at this point, the most common five millimeter one sixteenth bearings, um, that pivot will come out, but I don't even want it to really. And you'll see this scale is kind of starting to come out a little bit. I don't need it to do that either. And then there's this interesting backspacer. Um, but when everything's in place, that kind of sits flush like that. It's really, it's pretty cool. I like the design. It's simple. It has this rotating, stop pin thing that i swear the first time i saw that was in a vero design where the stop pin kind of goes from it's internal in the blade instead of you know having a stop pin just sit in the scale and then catch down here or whatever it goes back and forth in the blade and that i mean that honestly is probably more secure than anything um here are my bearings and my hardware uh, I have a lot, guys. Got some of these cool TRM O-rings for this knife, the Shadow. They've been really helpful so far in um, stopping that issue I had where it would deploy coming out of my pocket. 
I have Gillian bearings. I really want to get, he is now making these salt and pepper ones in the five millimeter size. So I cannot wait to get some of those. I emailed him today asking if I could, you know, buy some as soon as they're ready. Um, this is just an assortment of stock bearings that I've replaced at this point. Here is the bag for the five millimeter bearings that I used uh, from Gillian. I don't have any more. Um, and here are the ones I need. So these are the five millimeter one sixteenth from Skiff Made Blades. And uh, I have been promoting and talking about Gillian bearings a lot. But that does not mean I don't think skiffs are good. I, skiffs are amazing. I think they're right up there. You know, they're probably the same when it comes to quality. Skiff obviously has a longer background in it. Um, so I totally understand if you think they're better or you prefer them. You know, more power to you. I just have really enjoyed um, the Gillian bearing so far. And they fit into knives that I couldn't get skiffs into. So that just made it easier for me to endorse um, that. And I really like uh, Christopher Gillian. He's a cool dude, even though I've just really emailed with him. But just dabbing here, guys, not doing anything crazy. These should fit just fine because I had, I had them in before. And honestly, those stock bearings were amazing to begin with. Um, but now that I've used skiffs and Gillian's a lot, I notice little things like uh, a little bit of lateral movement in the blade. Uh, like when the blade is closing, like right after it passes the detent, um, on the close, like at this portion right here, I can feel it, you know, waggle back and forth a little bit, even though when it's locked up, there might not be any play. There might be some there, and that usually has something to do with the bearings just not being a perfect fit. And Skiff slash Gillian seem to take care of that issue. Um, I've become the biggest snob ever when it comes to knives and action and everything. And it just Skiff's Gillian's have made uh, a world of difference for me personally. But I totally understand anyone who... Uh, thinks it's bullshit, you know, it's not worth it. And, you know, if you don't pay that close attention or really care about those little details, then, yeah, it's not going to be some huge game changer. I've gone over that before. The difference between this Malibu pre-skiff and after-skiff, you know, might be a 10% improvement on an already fantastic knife. Is that worth it to me? 100%. To you? I don't know. That's up to you, right? I'm going to stop rambling. That's what happens when I'm drinking the beers. It's a Friday night. I'm just hanging out with you guys. My wife is finishing up work and probably just going to put some baby food together, take a shower, and go to bed. Um, we are pretty boring these days. Yeah, this backspacer is interesting. It just doesn't want to, like, sit perfectly for me, really. Um, let's see. Oh. Nope. Okay, Kev, calm down there, buddy. I think we're good. I prefer to put the clip on first. That should lock everything else into place. Yeah, you just didn't really have the two screws to contend with there. Um, and that, you know, makes everything substantially easier, honestly, because you're just putting the clip screw in and the pivot screw in. Why don't you want to sit in the pocket? What is going? There we go. Popped in there. Slide you through. Gotta love these drivers, guys. Totally worth the investment, in my opinion. I might as well just... I mean, it might have just been the one I had, but... I'll just drop a little Loctite in this sucker. Because I'm going to let it sit overnight anyway. Just putting a little bit on there. 
to get it in the threads. I did order some new stuff, uh, buddy Brandon. Uh, he's really big in the knife community. Uh, you know, he's in with a lot of people, talks to a lot of people. He's in a lot of the groups. He just, you know, he really interacts in the community. Uh, cool guy. And uh, he told me about this stuff called Permatex. And it's like, uh, it's not like a glue stick like this. But it's not, it's like a paste as opposed to liquid or this. So, I don't know. It seems kind of similar to this. I'm going to try it though. He seems to think it's good. And uh, he does a lot of research. And um, he's just, you know, he's a good resource in the knife community for me anyway. Um, was that just too easy or what? Centering. Centering, guys. We are dead centered, I think. Let me just tighten this. Let me just tighten this. And zoom out. Sorry, it's hard to do all this camera here. Let me put all this stuff away. Put the stuff away I don't need, right? All right. No blade play. Knife drops. Knife drops. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's just a it's just a good knife. I mean it's got great action. I mean these skips went in there, you know, two minutes ago. They're gonna take, you know, a little bit to break in. They always take like you know, a day of flicking and whatever for them to really break in. But I mean you can see right off the bat they're smooth as all get out. Um I still feel a little grit on the clothes but you can tell right there it's the uh detent ball and it's building that path into the blade because when i drop when i push this lock bar over and there's no pressure on the blade and you're then you're just the blade is basically just suspended on the bearings at that point you'll see what happens i mean it just drops down to my nail and down i mean absolutely fantastic i love this knife guys um it's a freaking home run from mtnt um i've talked to a few people about it that um i respect that i chat with a lot uh one of those people was jake uh bearded gear and you know i kind of when i got it i was like dude you would love this knife right i was excited about it i was like dude you would love this like and he basically was like, yeah, I was really interested. And I got to hold one at a show. And I just never, I just never pulled the trigger. I, it didn't fit my hand right. And I kind of see what he's talking about. Because of the ergonomics, it has this, like, it has this swell, this choil or whatever right here. And if I hold it like that, I mean, it, it's weird, right? Like a pink, whole finger's hanging off. So what you have to do is hold it up here, put your index finger up here. And then drop your middle finger into that choil. And, you know, it's 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 weird. Because I kind of don't. I kind of put it the middle finger right here. Right in the transition. But it still feels so comfortable in my hand. And now I'm close up to the blade. Like, for me, it just works. Um, if you have a small hand, I bet you this knife is even better. Um, I know they make a uh, Mach 3, which is like a titanium one with a frame lock. Uh, so I don't know the differences there, obviously for a lefty, that's a little more iffy. Um, so, but I just want to mention that. Yeah, it's just a really cool knife. I will say, um, Riot is usually really consistent with detents. And the first one I had was rather light. That was my one negative with it was I could easily, you know, uh, flick it out, fail it. You know, you could kind of do the shake or whatever. It was too light, but this one that I got is much stiffer. Um, it's just a better detent on this one. It takes a bit more force to come out, and that really helps with the flick because I love to kind of put my middle finger in there, build pressure, and then just shoot it out. Um, and this detent is much better for that. It does make it a little stiffer, on the front flip not really there on this reach around it does but still not hard at all it doesn't cause any issues so i love the detent on this one and i'm thinking because i know they did a second run basically 
uh, because dealers were getting them again recently. And I think what happened was they got that feedback and they upped the detent a little bit. They strengthened it. And I think that's the same thing that kind of happened with this. The F5.5 from Urban EDC. I think the early pre-ordered Micarta ones maybe were a little light on the detent. So they stiffened it up on the later ones. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but that's just kind of how it felt. Because th that titanium one and the carbon fiber one I got all had that stiffer detent. And so does this. So I'm going to I'm gonna chalk it up to constant quality control as opposed to a variance in the detent from Riot. Because they usually nail the detent every time consistently and don't have a big range. Like the difference between the two detents is pretty substantial. Um, so sorry, it's hard on camera there. But yeah, I really love this. This is the Mach 1 from MTNT, Wingman EDC, Tom Mayo Design. Um, one of my new favorite smaller EDC knives. So appreciate you guys stopping by. I love you, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I catch you later.